what what is, what makes her tick what does she want timing around sex right so when men tend to think about sex a mistake that they often make is they wait till the end of the day to initiate sex and our minds don't work like that for a woman to be interested in sex by the end of the day she needs periodic touches touches not necessarily meaning physical touch but check-ins, baby, you're sexy, you're beautiful, you smell good, you tasted so good last night, I'm still thinking about last night. I, when, I, when I work with men, I had a guy client said, my wife hasn't put her head on my chest in two years. They have kids. Like, that breaks him as a husband. You think that men want sex, you think that men just want to be told to be telling things all the time and to get things done. No, men want partnership. They want to create, the, they want that best friend in their house. They want to walk inside of their house and feel like they see eyes light up. Men actually care about these things, but they don't know how to generate that. They don't know how to create that. So once he starts to understand his woman, I teach him leadership skills about how he communicates, communicating effectively, right? So as an example, babe, you know, I want dinner done when I get home. You want to say, so the question is, you want to ask what's going on. You might find out. We got three kids. They're under three. By the time you leave, I swear, I promise you, by the time you get home, I don't even know where the day went. So as the leader, you get to troubleshoot, okay, what, in order for me to get dinner done, what do we need to create? What system do we need to create? Because she might want to have dinner done. But for her, managing three kids under three and one of them is on her boobs, that's extremely challenging for a woman who may not have any community, any support. It might be very difficult. So it's kind of like... So it, he it, takes it, the burden. Who? So he takes the burden. What makes... So, so who... I feel as is if... She, is she burdened? I feel like we have to hold people accountable. Like, that's all it is. Like... Mm -hmm. uh, if she, whatever she's going through and whatever he's going through, because he can make the same argument. I'm working two jobs so you, I can take care of you and four and three kids. Mm -hmm. There's four people in my house. I'm tired by the end of the day. I don't get to be able to talk to you and touch you. Mm -hmm. I only see you at night. Mm -hmm. So uh, and this is where a partnership is, is, is. See, my thing is where I'm having a disconnect. Yeah. Is that I feel as if majority of the work is being delegated to one party that's what i'm coming that's what mm -hmm. i'm digesting right can i say why are you hearing that but, all right well, hold because on. we are talking about men so when i work yeah. with women the conversation is very different when i work with women the accountability falls heavily on whoever i'm speaking with my goal working with a man is not to coddle or or coax what he's going through in the same way it's not my goal when i'm working with a woman I'm working with a woman right now and she's married. And the thing that I told her, the number one thing I told her to do, I told her, stop thinking that you're the standard for being a wife. Stop thinking that you're the prototype and maybe your marriage will do better because you think that you're the best wife ever and that any man will be lucky to have you. You don't know what your husband wants. That's how I talk to her because she is the topic. So when I'm talking to men, being an advocate for someone doesn't mean that everything that they're going through is like, if I said, if I said it was the world's fault, right? If I said it was the world's fault, if I said it was woman's fault, what hope does a man have to design and create the life that he wants? I have to empower men and support men and understand how to create that, how to generate that. By first also understanding what reciprocity looks like. I work with men who are in their 40s and 50s and they don't even know what they want from a woman because of what society told them they should want. And when they had it, they didn't even want it. Cassandra, can I can I just just yeah. <laughs> I, I f no I feel no, you, you uh, yeah because you're definitely an advocate but you know yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of course right mm -hmm. so my thing is this like on eight at the table we've always have these conversations that are taboo that people don't want to talk about uh -huh. right yeah so one of the conversations we had a while back if a dude is with a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna even vice versa, right? I'm, and he's just bad in bed. He just can't handle his business. Mm -hmm. And sex is very important to her. Mm -hmm. That alone could never fix nothing else. Mm -hmm. Everything else in your relationship is gonna be messed up. Facts. Mm -hmm. You could go to a thousand therapy sessions, but that thing is not. There's a part that's not happening. Like I'm a like. There's something that's not happening. Shorty not putting her head on your chest, mm -hmm. that's something that you don't got. Maybe you could get it. Yep. Maybe you could find it, but that's something you don't got. 
or maybe she yeah, might. And I gave it to him, and that's why, and that's why she, that's why she did it without him asking. Well, here's the thing. This, but here's, I get what he's saying and what you're saying. But what happened in that situation? There, it was already being done, right? No. Well, he said, you said in two years, they yes. have kids. So that means prior to those two years, her mm -hmm. putting the head on his chest mm -hmm. was already done. Mm -hmm. Which means it was a, there was a, f a fixing, mm -hmm. uh, a, a ability to fix that mm -hmm. issue that had, you know, came across in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But there are some relationships in mm -hmm. 2022 that mm -hmm. you just can't fix. I'm and not saying that not, they not, are. Not you, not mm -hmm. you and not me. And I'm not saying that they are. I'm just saying that like in a sense of, that man, there's nothing that he does. That woman, there's nothing that she mm -hmm. does that's going to be, you know, that's going to be able to make each other conduct themselves the way that they want to be. But Rico, so if that's the case, then they need to make a decision to not be together. But that's right. what She's we're not, saying. We're, we're, we're trying saying. to say that we're trying to say that that's good. But re, but but real find somebody that fits you. Yeah. So this is the thing. And people are lost. Women are lost and men are lost. And then they're getting together. And then we're having people try to tell us how to not tell us, but mm -hmm. teach us how to get what we want out of somebody who don't even know themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. So I'll, I'll give you all a, a very personal example. Um, I realize that. Words can cut. Mm -hmm. I realize I have a slick mouth. Yeah, I do. realize <laughs> that that I um, even if I'm not trying to be aggressive, even just the way I talk with my hands, it can come off aggressively. Mm -hmm. It can it, it can totally change my message. And one thing, like, and I've been in therapy for some years now, one thing that I still have to consciously work on and check in and talk to my therapist about is how I communicate with my husband. Mm -hmm. But I went to him with that problem. I was like, and I, I see a, it's a black male therapist. I'm like, look, I understand where my pitfalls are. I understand. I need tools. Right. Mm -hmm. And I understand because my husband has expressed it like, I love you, I know you, and I know you're not really coming like coming at me a certain way, but the way you talk sometimes, it, 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 ain't, it ain't bringing the best out of me. That's, mm -hmm. These are my words for him, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. I see the problem. I know what the outcome is. Now what's the solution? The solution is me finding tools, mm -hmm. talking to somebody to try to figure out, like, why am I even talking like that why 100%. why do i speak with my hands yeah. why you right. know and i got a deep voice so like the shit is just all like it shit can just be aggressive you know and that's not what i want to portray to him and i, I love this example because this is what i'm this is exactly what i think me and alan were trying to mm -hmm. say some people are who they are so let's just say this is aaron mm -hmm. she's been working to change it she needs the tools to change it mm -hmm. per se right but at the end of the day, more likely than not, Aaron's going to be this way for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And so what we're... But I have changed. Uh, no, we, no, you have progressed. So, so, yeah, I have progressed. But, but you have not changed. So and you, and you I won't. I understand the context. I think, like, to Aaron's point, right? We're talking about relationships, and this is a broad context. I work with people who are married, not people who are looking to be in a relationship. No, she's married. So... Yeah, that's what she's saying. Yeah, All right, cool. she works with my demo. I, no, I, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, you know what I'm saying that's my, that's my homie right so there. I'm not, I'm, I'm not here like grabbing a host of men yeah. and saying, oh, let me help you be the best man that you can be. No, 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 no. I'm working in a very controlled environment, which are men who are already in relationship. So some things and they want to stay. Correct. So some things were working. But some things are lost, right? So the things that might have been working in the beginning, such as like, oh, well, he used to take me out. He used to do what she's basically saying is like, I, I felt like I mattered to you. Well, to your point, well, now I work, I work three jobs and we got four kids. And so I have these responsibilities. OK, well, what does mattering get to look like in this context? OK, he wants dinner done by the time he gets home. You're feeling like you have three kids. You can't manage it all. What does him feeling supported as a husband get to look like by the time he gets home? These are conversations that get to happen around capacity and around compassion because you're already in a relationship. Now, if you guys are wanting to expand the conversation to the outskirts of people who are dating and looking for love, no, 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 let's keep it. Let's keep it. No, no, no. Let's keep it where. Let's keep it to yeah. what yeah. your your if your profession. My niche is working with people yeah. who are already in relationships. So obviously something was. So working. there's an there's an investment. They're married. Yes. So. 
And there's miscommunication. Some of that miscommunication is, so when I work with women, right, is do I think that a man has to always do foreplay? No, I don't, especially in marriage. Like, I don't think foreplay always has to be there. I don't think that, you know, um, like, I do think sometimes, yes, women, you want to be able to provide for your husband his physical needs if, if that's the need, right? Alternatively, when a woman hits 30 plus, her sex drive skyrockets and the husband feels like he can't keep up with it. Mm. Things get very tricky in a relationship when we're talking about this this controlled environment. Most of what I, what I do around coaching and what happens in coaching in terms of in marriage has to do with what are you guys willing, how are you guys willing to meet each other based on the needs and how are we going to look at trauma and things that predates you that's being triggered, that's flaring up. Like my trauma is, is on autopilot in this relationship and I didn't know it. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. uh, just, just out of your professional, mm -hmm. um, data I don't, I don't have a better word right mm -hmm. how many people you think that got married with the person they really wanted to marry probably very few 10 percent. probably very few so wow. if exactly. most people that you know in your profession mm -hmm. got married to the person they don't even want to be married to mm -hmm. exactly i didn't say that they don't want to be married to no, that no, person. no 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 so i'm not gonna put words in your mouth i yeah. just want to say what, what i'm saying real mm -hmm. quick because this is for real right you're making it sound like they got married to somebody they don't no, want to be no, with them no 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 i'm not saying that okay. got all to i'm the saying person. is like mm -hmm. Majority of people are married to somebody that's probably not their first or second choice, mm -hmm. right? People marry to somebody because of different reasons. It could be different circumstances. It could be stability. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, what's that thing? The clock start ticking. Mm -hmm. It could be a hundred different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. this is, which is a fact. This is not maybe. Mm -hmm. um, oh, girl, you just turned 29. Betty, Sue, and Kim, they got married. You out here looking nuts. Your mother's putting pressure on you. You get you married. Got, you got yep. pregnant. You got. So what I'm saying is like mm -hmm. most people that go into this union, mm -hmm. they don't usually, it's, it's very few people that go into that union mm -hmm. honest with the person they want to go on that journey Most, with. And the reason why is because their expectations were warped to begin mm -hmm. with. No, but... So, so, so the reason why people go into these relationships, they get into these relationships and they quote-unquote settle, newsflash, majority of people are going to settle. Newsflash, the key to a healthy relationship is the willingness to change. If you're going into marriage to be exactly who you are, please don't do it. Like, just don't, because you're going to change. It's, like, virtually impossible. There's no there's no way you're going into a relationship like that never changing. You want to be with somebody that you wouldn't mind being like. So if you have to be in a relationship with somebody that you have to change, shift, alter, maneuver, don't do that, right? The problem is, is that when people go into relationships, they go into these relationships and they've lost somebody because they had their expectations all the way over here, and they're trying to bring it down, and so they decide they're going to be in this relationship with this person, not truly vetting them, not truly understanding who they are, what is going to take for this relationship to grow and to blossom. Yes, people get into relationships for a, a myriad of unhealthy re reasons, but the number one reason is because their expectations are wild, yeah, so what I'm yeah. saying to you is this, and now I, I, what I'm saying is this. You take a girl mm -hmm. and you take a guy. They're going car shopping. She doesn't know what credit is. She doesn't know what money is. He doesn't know what credit is, and he doesn't know what money is. Yes. They're oblivious to it, right? Mm -hmm. The first car they see is an expensive Mercedes. They say, I want that car. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they're like, well, you could take that car, but... This is the payments. It's three thousand dollars a month. Right. And then, like driving for a month, they're like, I can't. Then the, I want that car. I want that. I want that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when they experience life and get beat up a little bit, and reality <laughs> starts settling in of mm -hmm. what they really could get, they want that Honda. They get the Kia. <laughs> <laughs> the kid oh, the dependable. <laughs> they want. They gonna get that oh, Honda. They've experienced all of this. And then they're like, that car is the car. You're going to get the mm -hmm. payments. Now that you know what payments are, now you know what credit is. Mm -hmm. Now you know what maintaining a car. You know what happens when the Bugatti breaks down? One tire costs 12 grand. It's a, it's a Facts. Rat. Right? Yeah. One tire. 12 grand. 
So now you experienced the Bugatti, mm -hmm. and it was sitting in your house for years because you didn't have the money for the mm -hmm. for the tire. Mm -hmm. now, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God! So now the Kia is here, <laughs> and the Kia's payments mm -hmm. is one ninety nine a month. Yep, very affordable, yeah. very comfortable, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make you happy. And that's what people have. But this is what you're in. Wait a minute. You lost me there. Because I'm going to say why. Because <laughs> in my opinion, mm -hmm. a lot of people that I talk to, mm -hmm. I'm always inspired by happy relationships. Mm -hmm. I love to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love to see communication. I think Erin said it one time. She was like, at the end of the day, is this the person I want to be? Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm going through my stuff, that's going to happen. Like, things like that I love. Mm -hmm. But most of the times, <laughs> when I see relationships yeah. and marriages... They'd be like, well, you know, it's the best I could have done. Well, part of that is like it's better, people, people it's better get into than relationships. It's better than Halo. <laughs> okay, shout, oh. out, uh, shout out to any oh. girl named Halo. The, I think so, part of the problem is that people go into 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 marriages unadvisedly. Yeah, no, but mm -hmm. Aaron, what yeah, I'm trying to say. It's easy to get married. Thank you. No, but, it's easy to get. You want to get married? The cameraman's right here. We could get married right now. Like, all we got to do is just trip, trip, trip. No, no, right. no, no. I'm but, missing but, the but, point. But, but what I'm saying is. Yeah, I get his point. My opinion is. This is just my opinion. My opinion is. People would not even believe mm -hmm. if you open yourself up, mm -hmm. that Kia sometimes is better than a Bentley. Yes. If mm -hmm. you learn to understand that vehicle, if you learn to do that, it's better than a Bentley. Okay. But what happens is that people, most mm -hmm. people refuse mm -hmm. to accept that. Mm -hmm. They would rather... Mm, yeah, they would rather die yes. with the Mercedes. And, and, we agree. We y'all, you're literally saying the exact same. Nah, thing. no, we're no, not. We're not. Yes, we're saying, you no, are. we're not. I'm so not. He's saying. I get what you see. Where he's saying the same thing. It sounds like the by same accepting as what you have, by learning what you have. That in that context is the same. But accepting what you are value, accepting what you qualify for, is the difference. Most people don't like. For example, Shorty with the head thing, with the laying on the shoulder thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because she's like. But if she if she saw him for what he was, mm -hmm. that's not an issue. That's but she. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is fair. fair. Because it's not fair to anybody. Bro. Changes happen in relationships. Like, she expanded on that. Like, you, yeah. might, have, you might have gotten. You, you don't have a mic. No. Yeah, you don't have a mic. You're killing me. You might have lost <laughs> your way. You see what I'm saying? Yes, that's exactly what happened. In speaking, when you go to a marriage and family therapist, right? And you, you might have. Talking to another therapist right here. Oh, oh turn your mic around. No. All right, yeah. I'm going to hand the mic back to you. Go ahead. You see, you might have lost your way. Yeah. It doesn't mean that... Okay, Alan's stressed out because I'm, I'm not... No, no, no. Just go ahead and say what you got to say. No, you can't say because Shorty doesn't... Because she's not putting her head on his shoulder, right? If he really wants that to, to return, he can... Like, what do you need from me so that we can recapture that? Mm -hmm. And she could be like, you know... What I really need is when this happens, I feel safe to do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then boom. So, it the point, so, 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 this so, is what I'm so, about. Take, take, take the mic back. So, here's a thing. Chi right? uh, the chicken and the egg. It's like, yo, this body, right? Cars break down, mm. relationships go through wear and tear. True. We're not going to compare six months of dating to 13 years of marriage. Okay. We're not going to compare it, right? Because the wear and tear is different. The part where you lost me at, because I think I legit believe we, we agree on a lot of fronts, is that they're with somebody that doesn't make them happy. That's part of the high expectation that I'm talking about. Nobody should have the ability to make you happy. And I'm going to prove that because I learned a big secret very early in my life, okay. which is I was 24, married, black woman, educated, You're... master's degree. Okay. Yep. You got married at 24? Yep. Sweet age. To my, to my high school sweetheart. Okay. He was I... Haitian? Yep. <laughs> yep. What's your name? Jean. <laughs> St. Pierre. Max, 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 John. St. Pierre. John St. Pierre. No. And we were married, high school sweetheart. Right. One, we're, all, we're all one and only. And I had we had more money that I needed to spend making great money. You know, we didn't get married because somebody got pregnant. We didn't get married because anybody's parent was forcing anybody. We got married and we were in this marriage and I was unhappy. Was he good in bed? Yes. So yes. You were with him for over eight years. Yeah. And then you were unhappy. No, no. 
What I'm pointing You were satisfied or you were unhappy? What I'm pointing at yeah, is which that Yeah, which one? Which one? You were unhappy or you were unsatisfied? Why were you unhappy? And we can Ooh, figure can out if we, you were unsatisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it was like, like Yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like y'all take Cuz you can't like, just throw this out there like you dated somebody for a I'm decade saying, and was what unhappy. The thing is is the secret is is that I could not rely on him to make me happy. I did not know that it was my responsibility no to figure out what that looks like for me. So I was unhappy in the relationship, right? Not necessarily because there was a lot going on in there and, you know, much of which that's personal and I don't want to, you know, that's somebody else's business. It's his business. We're not together. You guys divorced? Yeah, we're divorced. Can, can I just, was there any cheating involved? No. Okay. No. So that's why I said, like, there's... Was he making as much money as you? Honestly. We made we made about the same. As a matter of fact, I wasn't, I became like a, a stay-at-home wife for a little while. Okay. So basically, I, if you, to give us a, a small amount of context, and I do have a daughter with him, so, you know, I don't want to put too much out there, but, um, you know, he we, we decided to transition from a New York life. We moved to another state. I became a stay-at-home uh, wife. All of the things that I attached to my, my mattering were gone. Because you took, are you from Brooklyn? I'm from Brooklyn. You can't take a Brooklyn um, girl and bring her to the birds unless you know what you're doing. I didn't. This is a thing. Unless she's I, ready. <laughs> uh, this is a thing. I thought that it's not about the birds, right? Because you, now you're saying like she's from Brooklyn, like as if the streets were offering me something. My 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 worth wasn't attached to the streets. My worth was attached to the accolades I was getting in school, being educated, being uh, going on tours to present my research. All of that was gone, but my identity mm. was attached to that. So, no, it had nothing to do with Brooklyn. It had a lot to do with where I was at school, which was Columbia University. So, if we're going to, like, throw Bro, all that we out got, there, That's now you talking. Now you're on eight at the we're table. We're going to throw some stuff yeah, out there. Yeah, now you on eight at the was, table. Let's that go. Was, that was stripped from me. Okay. Not by, And it wasn't intentional. He wasn't trying to, like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to ruin her life. Nor was I thinking, I'm, at this point, I'm 27. Unintended consequences. Yeah, I'm 27. I don't know that moving to another state is going to be such a, a huge shift for me. Had no idea. We thought it was going to be the best move of our life. This is again and going back to what I was saying, which is people not knowing themselves. You didn't. You were attached to you, mm -hmm. and you got out of you mm -hmm. and went with what he wanted from you, and then now you guys were what, unhappy. What, what did he want from me? Well, he, he wanted that you that I didn't want the stay at home wife. You you wanted something, but you Who didn't. Said I didn't want that. Okay, you know what? You, you wanted it. it, but that's not what you, you wanted. No, that's not what you, you wanted guys, for you. you so. Understand what I'm saying. I learned. That's what I'm saying. I learned the secret, right? What's the secret? Tell us the secret. The secret is that you have to do your own inner healing. <sighs> you have to do your own your own inner healing. I wanted to be in the burbs. I wanted to be a stay at home um, wife. I wanted. We we joined. Twenty seven. Yeah, younger than that. And I'm gonna tell you why. My mom worked a lot. Okay. And I did not like that growing up. We had conversations at sixteen what our life was gonna look like. Okay. We abided by that, but what it looked like and felt like was very different than what we imagined it was going to be. Wait, do you realize that <laughs> at an early age you were following your mother's footsteps? How? College, Columbia University, educational accolades. Mm -hmm. That's still work. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now what we have to do, and this is what I'm trying to say. Which we wanted to get away from. No, it's not we. Like, forget about the we. Mm -hmm. People are not being real with themselves, and they don't know who they are when they get into these relationships. So how, how do you, so, how do you, how so do you this imagine is what I'm a person would figure what that looks like? Well, the thing is, you need to figure it out, right? Wow. Well, By being honest with yourself. By being honest wow. with yourself. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Wow. In my opinion, just from your story. Mm -hmm. Aaron, this is just, tell me if this is making sense what I'm asking, right? No, because Aaron is like my, my baseline right now because I know I'm not coming across to on this because I might I'm, be coming across crazy. Yeah. My bad. So my but bad. I'm just getting past so, <laughs> there's, there's some real There's some real things that you're not saying that I would like to, and I don't, I don't want to go into your personal business. Yeah. But at 27 years old, you're a very accomplished woman. You're a very pretty lady, and you're very smart. Mm -hmm. There has to be a point that... Most people don't want to admit in relationships mm -hmm. that you look at the relationship at 27 years old and you say, can I do better by myself without no. you or, or yeah. can we do better together? So to be clear, you, it was, there you know, was like there has to be like everybody has that, that, that thought. That's, that's why so, I don't like bringing personal things, because now you guys, there are lots of reasons why people leave relationships that 
could be around personal things that I don't. Again, I have, because I have a daughter with with him. Which are, yeah, ex-husband. I want to respect her and Fair. him, right? And, and we'll re- so There's, you know what? Let's, so let's, we could change yeah, the subject. We'll talk about something from that, else, right? So overall, right? Mm-hmm. When people are in these relationships. Do they not know themselves? That is correct. What is the best way to learn who you are, what you like, what you don't like, than by being in a relationship? You learn so much more about yourself. There's lots of there's lots of variables that can happen in a relationship. So you get to discover it in terms of who you want to be with. That's why I like what Aaron said. Is this the person that I feel like I want to be with when I'm having a bad day, when I'm having a bad season? Because that's sure to come. That's that, that, there's anything that's predictable is that. So choose a person what? that choose a person that you can be friends with. It's a, it's a, a little poetic because yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm I'm say saying. something like this. The reason why I say poetic, I, look, you just said you were the dude you feel safe, right? When you were just giving the story earlier, mm-hmm. there are women they've been with you ten years. Mm-hmm. Still don't feel I'm talking safe. about no, no. Did she feel safe? That's true. She feels That's safe. True. She's happy. Everything. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about. She's good. Mm-hmm. You guys happen to go out, boom, boom. Something happens and some cats, some dudes walk up. And pushes your man or something happens where he doesn't defend you. He runs or he just gets scared. Mm -hmm. He reacts with fear. Mm -hmm. That woman at that exact moment Mm -hmm. has left that man where he's at. Mm -hmm. Her feelings are gone. Her emotions for him are gone. Everything that she loved about him is gone. Mm -hmm. Now they go back home. Maybe she don't say nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. But that whole dynamic is gone. What I'm saying is like relationships or more based on dynamics. Mm-hmm. There are dynamics that exist in relationships. When the dynamic goes missing, mm-hmm. people don't want to really say what's going on. Do mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying to so, you? And there's no coming back from it. And and it's, some of them you point, can yeah. come back from, yeah. but I would say there are key ones that you cannot come back from. So nice. you're pointing to a feminine and masculine experience. No, no. Yes, dy- just, yeah, it is. It is. I guess it is <laughs> feminine and masculine. Yeah. But, I but we try to do no genderism. No, I, use that, I use that example. I use that example. But what you're just Describing is a primitive response, is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this this exact reason why I use the example with the car, why I talk about gasoline and water. I'm talking about at the baseline, primitively, how, what it, what drives a woman? A right? hunter. Okay. If when, he, he, when, he, yes. if he can't hunt and bring you nothing back, if you mm-hmm. talking yes. primitive, like you, yes, go, you don't want nothing to do with that. Absolutely. And what do women do? If he's the hunter, she's the... Gathering. Right. And what do, again, primitive responses... If you look, do you at all know what gatherers need to do in order to gather like? But I don't think like that because if my wife is a better hunter wait, than wait, me, wait, she could go out there and do it and I'll gather. I think like that, but I'm a better hunter. But what she's talking about, <laughs> talking about primitive. Yeah. Okay. What I'm saying is that there are a lot of... Gatherers do a lot of stuff. Like yeah. what? Um, first of all, they make sure that the, the town the is good. Mm-hmm. They, they put... The, the whole community together. Mm-hmm. They actually, sometimes the gatherers map out what the hunter's going to go do. Mm-hmm. They create more. Um, they make the hunter's job easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They take care so of everything. It's a lot of work. It's a, tr- it's a lot of That's strategy. A lot of it's a lot of it's thinking. Like, it's a lot. You're doing what your mom was doing. You're working. Like, well, no, yes, what I'm trying to say, work. what I'm saying is, because if you want to, let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. I think that people are not being honest with themselves and their mm-hmm. journeys and who they are and why they are the way that they are. And we had Stefan speaks. Shout out to him. When he was Big on here, out. I said how I figured out who I was and why I was the way was by writing down all my flaws mm-hmm. and then letting it all pour out and then stemming, you know, and dying and peeling back the layers and that no one's doing the work on themselves and they jumping into marriages yeah so it doesn't matter what you coach it doesn't matter what therapy you seek you Mm -hmm. cannot change you because you can identify where you came from and that's my that's the point that i'm making so you don't think that that's what happens in sessions or when they get coached like they're discovering who they are i don't think that a lot of times they are honest if no. A lot of therapy is not. A lot of therapy is coping and coddling mechanisms. No, it's not. I don't feel as if. I do not feel as if every therapy. Every Maybe therapist, your therapist. I don't have a therapist, and nor do so, I. So need wait. So if you like, wait, 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 wait. If you don't have a I've therapist, been, wait, wait. If yes. you if you don't have a therapist, have yes. never had a therapist, no. have never been in a therapy no. session. How do you even have an idea? Because we had therapy. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm how do you how do you even have an idea uh-huh. of what goes on in a therapy session?